Hey buddy, this is Colin, Mr. Old School Gamer. Welcome back to the channel and thank you for checking out this video. Today I'm bringing you a clip of the post nerfed Habarovsk, the tier 10 Russian destroyer. Now this is a 3 cap domination mode map and uh, you could say that we have an advantage in destroyers and you could say we also have a disadvantage in destroyers because we have two Habarovsk on our team which could be a really like a game changer you could say Habarovsk depending on who is uh, the skipper could be uh, I mean, just an enormous carry machine that can pretty much carry any team and uh, change the outcome of any game. But uh, if the captain is uh, a bit less skilled, then uh, it can be a downgrade pretty much or a disadvantage because in a 3 ca cap demonation game you will always need to rely on getting these caps and uh, if you built your Habarovsk to be as efficient killing machine as possible then you are stuck with a detection range of 9.7k which is worse than a lot of uh, cruisers at these tiers uh, which is pretty bad when you're trying to go in and cap caps so of course we're gonna have a disadvantage in getting caps because we have two Habarovsk with really bad poor detection but uh, if we have the possibility to kill a lot of the enemy destroyers the enemy team also has four to our three destroyers, so they have kind of an advantage in that case as well. They also have a strong lineup with a gearing uh, Z-52, I think it was, and uh, Shimakase, and also Augnevoy. So they both have like gunships and torpedo boats, which are a pretty good mix of destroyers. Now somehow I managed to cap this cap and that is probably because the enemy team didn't seem to go for A at all. Instead they focused their attention to B and C which they also took. Now our team has uh, dispersed somewhat. We have a Shimakase for what reason I don't know is pushing away from B and instead leaving a couple of cruisers and battleships to try to take B while he is pushing alone up to C where he is um, get uh, met up uh, from the enemy Shimakase and also the enemy gearing uh, now that play wasn't really that smart in my book I think he should have stayed in B tried to smoke the friendly team up instead and try to help them retake B instead of just trying to push C alone. Now my plan here is pretty much to push this west flank north really hard and pretty much work like a sheep herder, like one of those dogs that uh, herds around sheep. <laughs> And pretty much just push all the enemy ships on this flank north uh, towards the sea cap. Meanwhile, hopefully uh, the rest of the team, which is still on the south uh, side of B, will do the same on that side. And this way we can pretty much push the enemy team up against C, isolate them there and uh, hold the cap advantage and get, of course, the ticket advantage as well and uh, pretty much uh, forcing them to overextend and uh, get killed which is pretty much the object of any three cap domination match now as you can see I am uh, 
trying to hold that uh, magical sweet spot for the Habarovsk, which is uh, between 11 kilometers and 13.5, which is, of course, the max range of your guns. Because as a Habarovsk, you should uh, really never try and push in closer than 11 kilometers, because then the enemy fire will become uh, very much uh, focused. You will be taking a whole lot of uh, unnecessary damage and also open yourself up to a whole lot of uh, enemy secondary fire from those German battleships. So you should always try and uh, pretty much uh, follow the lead of the enemy fleet that you are engaging and uh, if they start to push you, you need to pull back if they are trying to flee, like this uh, poor Turpitz is doing, then you of course can just um, keep up, because you have this uh, great speed. No one can really uh, escape you. <laughs> now I see this uh, Shapayev on the minimap trying to push in a bit closer, and of course I start to uh, switch my attention to him instead, because I don't want him to try and push me, because... Shapayev, being a Russian cruiser, is also an extremely strong ship and can really put me in a world of hurt if I let him. So then I start turning back again and uh, kiting away, engaging both the Shapayev and these two uh, battleships. So as soon as you see the team fleeing from you, you start chasing. And as soon as you see any enemy ship start pushing you, then you are falling back, kiting away. And that is like the secret magic tactic of uh, pretty much any Russian ship. Not even, not only Habarovsk, but also like Kutuzov and Shapayev. All these ships have this great uh, playstyle to them. Now the enemy are taking B cap, which is a big problem uh, because all the other destroyers on my team has uh, died, of course, so it's only me left. And uh, as I said before, the Habarovsk isn't really made for capping because I have really crappy detection and uh, try to be inside the B cap where I will be detected at all times. Even if I didn't fire, I would uh, be detected at all times. Uh, it, well, it would pose a, quite a challenge for me to uh, actually take this uh, cap. But uh, I don't really have any choice. Because if I don't try and retake or at least contest this cap, then uh, this game will be over pretty soon. Because you can also see that uh, the team has been uh, melting all around me and uh, the enemy has, I think, uh, two ship advantage on us right now. And also, of course, the cap advantage. Now I see this enemy gearing in B cap and of course when you are up against a gearing or a Fletcher in a Habarovsk, you should always kite away because then you will use your advantage against him. If you are closing in to a US DD, then their rate of fire with, will uh, soon become the advantage in that knife fight and you will lose. So always get away from uh, US DDs because uh, when you get some range from that uh, DD, you will... Uh, they will have the disadvantage of their insane arcs and it will make them really hard for them to actually hit you. Now I really lose my shit on this Amagi on our team who is just sailing, cruising around down that big giant island at A. Meanwhile the entire team is uh, getting killed all uh, around him and we are pushing and fighting hard at B all alone. Meanwhile, he is probably full health, I guess. Just sailing down there, doing yak shit for anyone. 
and I uh, can't really stand that kind of player or playstyle. I... yeah. I just can't take it. So now I'm just heading straight into B, trying to take this cap, and we have like four or five ships right beside me, so this will be pretty much mission impossible for me. But I need to try and do it anyways, because if we don't take the cap, we are pretty fucked. But I would really love for that Amagi to be up here at B cap with us, tanking a bit for our team. Instead, it's now me and these two cruisers tanking for the team, and we can't really tank. That's a problem. Now, as I said, this is uh, the post nerf Habarovsk, and it's uh, quite an interesting thing. <laughs> I mean, I. I I have lost count on how many times they have uh, nerfed the Habarovsk in quotation marks, nerfed. Because at this point I can't really say anything else than it feels like Wargaming is just uh, like fake nerfing it. Because they do want the community to think they are doing something because it's uh, this big outcry about the Habarovsk being overpowered but still I think it's the Russian bias that uh, makes them don't want to switch that uh, number one place on the throne I mean I don't think they want to nerf the Habarovsk so uh, one of the other nations destroyers get to the number one spot and uh, that is why they did this hilarious nerf to the torpedoes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've been playing the Habarovsk for a while. I've uh, played it through all the nerfs. And I mean, I mean, this was just a joke. Are you seriously trying to tell me that you are trying to nerf the Habarovsk by giving her 6k torps instead of the 10k torps? I mean, no sane Habarov's captain ever relied on the torps on this ship. I mean, those are just like extra gravy. You use them to uh, play a little uh, game of uh, area denial, pretty much. Maybe scare some ships uh, shooting off your torps when you know there are enemy spotter planes around, just to scare the enemy team, pretty much. Because... <laughs> I mean, as you can say, see in this game, I mean, uh, I don't really need uh, my uh, 10k torps to make a dent in the enemy team. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> good work, Wargaming. <laughs> that said, I do think Habarovsky is a really crazy strong ship. Is it really overpowered? I mean... Yeah, I know all the stats say one thing, I mean, uh, it has a uh, way better win rate than any other tier 10 destroyer, and uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I uh, of course consider this uh, ship to be insanely strong. Uh, that said, it still needs, as you saw, I mean, we had another Habarovsk uh, on our team uh, this round, and uh, he did, uh, well, yak shit, I'm sorry to say. Uh, as you can see in the post-battle screen, I think he's uh, the last guy on our team. So, just having a Habarovsk doesn't mean that you are pulling out uh, over 200k games every time. Because uh, you still need to have some skill, you still need to learn how to play her like any other ship. And I mean, every ship has its uh, big uh, strengths and weaknesses. Okay. Habarovsk maybe have some more strength than some others, but uh, so it doesn't really mean that if you just uh, get the Habarovsk, uh, you're gonna just rule the seas because uh, you still need to be good at playing her because uh, as, as, not even me can pull out uh, amazing games in her uh, these days. It was another thing, uh, like two, three nerfs ago. Then she was uh, insanely overpowered. 
Now I was uh, suggested by a guy in team chat that I shouldn't be focusing uh, this uh, enemy battleship who pretty much played the same role on the enemy team as our Amagi did on our team. Um, but uh, we didn't really have any targets spotted at B and uh, I didn't really want this uh, enemy battleship to be able to shoot us in the back, especially the cruisers on our team. Now the bat Baltimore uh, finally died, unfortunately, so now it's only me and this uh, St. Louis. So we pretty much uh, lost this round. Now the, even the St. Louis died, so it's me against five ships and that's two destroyers left. So I'm basically fucked at this point. But I've done uh, 200k damage so far, getting uh, three rewards or medals. So at least I pulled my weight, I think. They can't really blame me if we lose, lose this game. And uh, as you saw, both the destroyers smoked up in B and started to hammer me with the shells. And since I'm already spotted by the big ships on the enemy team, I can't really stick around near B. Because those two destroyers with their focus fire and also these big ships would have killed me in an instance. So really the only play for me right now is to uh, kite away from B and those destroyers and just farming some extra damage on this uh, poor battleship instead and uh, i didn't either want uh, i didn't want the enemy battleship in the south to be able to go around and uh, cap a as well and uh, i think uh, that is pretty much what is happening now as well. It's never good to let the enemy have like a pincher move on your team or yourself. Because it's really hard to uh, fight enemy ships that are on several different angles and uh, several different flanks. From you, so to speak. But as you can see, I mean, this ship don't need any 10k torps. I think uh, from all the games I played in the Habarovsk, which are pretty well documented on my playlists here on my channel, I may have uh, gotten torpedo strikes or even torpedo kills. I could probably count the times on my both hands. I mean, uh, it's that seldom that you get uh, any work done with your torpedoes. And of course now with these uh, nerfs, I mean, it's a pure suicide weapon. If you want to do a great suicide, you can probably do a big dent in a tier 10 battleships with these 10 torps. But uh, then you still need to survive to get within uh, 6k range from that battleship and that isn't easy in uh, Habarovsk because uh, as I said before as soon as you cross that uh, threshold that magic uh, border of 11 kilometers from enemy fleet you will see a whole other world, world for the Habarovsk. So the game finally ended and it was still a loss unfortunately but I did some decent uh, damage 240k pretty much made number one in uh, our team the losing side number three in the entire game and as you saw the Habarovsk and the Amagi well they didn't do much Meanwhile, I tanked over 2 million damage for our team. And that is a pretty well tanked game for a destroyer. That is 2 million damage I saved the teammates from this round, pretty much. 
which is one of the strength of the Haberovsk. And finally, I just wanna leave you guys with a bit of a funny, extremely low health uh, finish in the Shiratsuyu. And uh, before I do, I just wanna give a special shout out to the guys on the team in the previous video. The guys that uh, stuck by B and uh, helped keeping the pressure on the enemy team. I really love your guys' support. So a big shout out to those guys. And uh, that said, I want to thank you guys for checking out this video. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment below. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, already. And uh, have a great week guys. See you guys later. Bye bye. Two of them.